Hello, today we're going to talk a bit more specifically about tangents. So a tangent line to a circle theorem, go ahead and draw a circle. And we're going to put Q in the center. So do your best to draw a circle. Draw point Q. And then draw a tangent line. So remember, a tangent line is one that only touches the circle in one spot. It's going to look like that. It turns out that this theorem says that if you were to draw a line from the center to the tangent point, the point of tangency, we'll call this P, then that actually makes a perpendicular line. And we can say that we'll call this line M. You can say that M is perpendicular to QP, to that segment. Okay, let's look at another theorem. There's another theorem that says the tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. So let's draw a picture of what that looks like. So draw another circle. And then we're going to draw a random point out here. We'll call this point S. I want you to draw it so that think about where that's going to be tangent to the circle. So if we were to draw a line going through the circle, go into that point, and this time it's going to be a line segment. Let me draw it one more time. Actually, more like that. I don't want to extend past the circle. Okay, and now let's draw from here. Uh, it's not exact, but I think that's the best I can do for freehand drawing it. Well, it makes it a bit easier that I'm using Apple Pencil as well does some auto-correcting. All right, so we've got center P. And now let's draw, just so we can kind of get a visual for this, I want you to draw from the center to where the tangent line is. And I want you to remember from the last theorem, we know these are right angles. And it turns out that SR, oh, I forgot to label this, R and T. So SR is actually congruent to ST. So you could say this is the same as this, which is a pretty cool fact there. And we can actually use these information to find some things. Or in this case, we're going to ask ourselves, is ST tangent to circle P? Sometimes things might look tangent, but they actually aren't. And so remember with the Pythagorean theorem, we can check to see if this is a right angle. So we draw the triangle, and we're wondering if that is a right angle. And remember, C is always going to be the largest. So we'll say this is C, and this is A and B. It doesn't matter which one's A and which one's B, as long as C is the largest. So we're going to say, so let's just see if 35 squared plus 12 squared, does it equal 37 squared? Punch this into your calculator, and you get 1,225. Make that a little neater. Plus 144. We're still wondering if that equals, once you square 37, you get 1,369. Add the two on the left together, and you get 1,369. Woohoo! So we know that these are the same, which means yes. ST is tangent to circle P. Okay, let's try that again. Had kind of a lot of steps. So this time we're wondering if BA, this segment right here, is tangent to circle C. Notice that this has to be C because 18 is the largest side. We'll call this A and this B. So we've got 9 squared plus 15 squared. And we want to know, does that equal 18 squared? Go ahead and use your calculator to square everything. So we get 81 plus 225. Oh, not congruent. And we're wondering, is it equal to 18 squared, which is 324? All right, 81 plus 225 is 306. Oh, darn it. We're not quite tangent because those numbers aren't equal. We're going to say no. Okay, now we're going to use our last theorem, the one that said, so it says B and D are points of tangency, so right here, 
And they both go to a common point, which means that these two sides equal each other, or these two tangent segments. So we're going to set these equal to each other in order to find x. Now, it's been a while since we did some algebra, but remember that you have to get all your variables over to one side. So if we have two x's over here, we want to subtract them from the five x's that are on the left. You just have three x's left, and recopy everything that's still there. Now, let's get our regular numbers over to the other side by adding eight. And now we have three x's or 3 times x equals 15. Opposite of multiplying is dividing, so we get x equals 5. Alright, that is it for today. Talk to you later.